So we actually are um, pretty happy about holding our first briefing here at the Advanced Learning Library. More importantly, you can look around and see all of the activity. Uh, a, a summer morning in Wichita and the majority of the parking lot is filled with cars and families and uh, what a great place to be. So um, just, just a great opportunity to see the investment that we made as a city and, and how well it's being received. And, and so we appreciate you all being here. Another reason why we're hosting uh, our briefing here is to showcase all of the new tools which bring reading to our community in a fun and innovative way. Our advanced learning library in conjunction with a grant from the Knight Foundation is one of four libraries selected to participate in the Public Library Association Fostering Creative Community Connections project. Launched in March at the uh, Public Library Association's 2018 conference in Philadelphia, the project promotes reading and literacy, community engagement, library program services, and creative expression from diverse writers through short story dispensers in the National Short Story Contest. In conjunction with the grant, there will be a National Short Story Writing Contest, which will be sponsor, which will also be sponsoring here locally. Here to tell more about this is Cynthia Berner, the Director of Libra Libraries. Cynthia, why don't you come up and share? Welcome everybody to the Advanced Learning Library. It is our delight today to officially share with you our participation in the Short Story Dispenser Project. This was an idea of the Knight Foundation. They went to the Public Library Association, which is the national organization that works with public libraries, and they put out a competitive grant opportunity. Four libraries were selected, as the mayor said. So Wichita is joining with Akron, Ohio, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Richland County, South Carolina, as the four cities in the United States which will be making these dispensers possible. It's another example of the great work that we are able to do in Wichita as a result of the Knight Foundation. And I want to also thank Shelley Pritchard and our friends at the Wichita Community Foundation. Although they are not administering this Knight Foundation, a lot of our other work in the past through the Knight Foundation is being made possible by Shelley and her team. The dispensers, as you see here, are very simple. There are two kinds. One has three buttons that will dispense short stories that can be read for one minute, three minutes, or five minutes in length. The second has two buttons, one for adult stories and one for stories for children. Our two-button dispenser will soon be on its way to the University of Kansas Medical Center Pediatric Clinic waiting room. One of the three button dispensers will be going to the VA clinic waiting room. And the third dispenser with the three button model, we're going to take around town to interesting places. And by this afternoon, you will be able to take advantage of that over at Reverie Roasters in their initial store over on East Douglas. But Mayor, I do think we have somebody here with us today who is able to demonstrate these for you if you would like to see how it works. Absolutely. So, as you can see, really simple to use. <laughs> yes, mom will read it, but um, we know that it will be very popular, and the intent of the program is just to encourage people to read everywhere you are. It's easy to do no matter where you are, particularly in waiting rooms, unexpected places around town. So we appreciate, again, the Knight Foundation, Public Library Administration, and the city for helping us to make this possible. Cynthia, thank you so much, and, and thank you to the Knight Foundation. Um, I thought Shelly was here to also demonstrate the adult version of that. <laughs> She's almost teetering on adulthood. want to also mention our, our walk along well and certainly thanks to uh, the generosity of the Nye Foundation. We are going to be holding our monthly walk. We've decided to move it to Saturdays during the summer and, and this Saturday's our scheduled walk and we're going to hold it at one of our parks, our Harvest Park at 11 a.m. so you can come and join us. The weather this Saturday looks to be pretty inviting to get out and walk and so we would encourage you to do that. Another great night funded program that promotes walkability and the chance to connect in person. 
without scheduling a meeting, get moving, and enjoy our public spaces. Uh, we're going to start rotating it to different parks around the city in hopes of getting people to join us and see all of the great amenities that we have. So it's a great opportunity to meet in person and provide comments and feedback. Plus, if you present an idea to make our community a better community, a more walkable community, a healthier community, you can fill out a one-page application and you have the opportunity to win up and award up to $1,500 for a grant for your idea. Did I miss anything on that grant? You have the perfect name for the program. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. Um, anything else that you wanted to cover? You're good? And then I want to also mention a, a new program that we're going to start, and I'm going to have Victor can come up and share a little bit. We are going to start tonight on KPTS Channel 8, my first call-in show, where you can call in, ask questions. This is a community's chance to ask any question, and we'll provide um, some dialogue and what's going on in our city. Our goal is to be open and transparent and as possible as we aim to um, cover a wide variety of topics and shows. So, Victor, you want to add to that? You probably are the person who has the most experience at doing this. Why don't you come up and share just a moment? We are excited at KPTS because it takes leadership for a mayor, for anyone in the city, any person in, in the position of leadership, to really open up the phone lines to take questions. And Mayor, I'm very proud of what you're doing and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's one small thing that our public television station, your public television station can do for you and our community. And we ask you to tune in tonight because the mayor will be willing to take all of your questions. So call in, the number will be on the screen and we look forward to a wonderful program the last Thursday of every month. Thank you, Mayor. So just to add a little bit more to that, we intend to, there's going to be times when we'll, we will bring um, department heads, maybe the city manager, or when we have a really tough month, we'll bring the vice mayor to. <laughs> but we, we are, <laughs> absolutely. So we'll be bringing a wide variety of different people to participate in this dialogue with the community. The reality is we know that we're not reaching everyone when we're just trying to reach people through our traditional channels of, of the cable uh, channel 7 peg station that we have and to reach more we know we got to find different ways to do that and this will be one way to reach those that don't have our cable channel 7 plugged into their house and so we think this will be a great opportunity for those including my kids that have all gone to just antennas for their viewing pleasure and so it's uh we think it's going to be a great opportunity so i did want to mention that i have the vice mayor uh, brian fry and and um, james clendenon have joined us along with the city manager so if you have any tough questions because we want to talk briefly about the budget since that's been the conversation of the community since um, mr layton presented his budget proposal to the city council and, and I think it's important to understand that we are one of those government entities that's required and, and thankfully so to have a balanced budget every year. So after uh, quite a bit of dialogue with the council and the community, the manager presented his idea for a balanced budget that obviously had shifted some priorities over to our police, fire, and um, infrastructure because that is the core service for uh, government and we feel strongly that those are our highest priorities. But understanding that, uh, we also feel deeply that quality of life is a high priority in our city. So not only supporting police, fire, and infrastructure, we're going to try and figure out a way, at least for this next budget season, to um, continue to focus on those quality of life aspects that, that we are, um, we know that are incredibly important to the community. So the new 32 new police positions um, will require a shift of $3.4 million in our budget. 
we were moving two million dollars over in street maintenance into our budget so that we can get caught up on neighborhood streets we also are shifting almost 10 million of Hyatt proceeds over to neighborhood streets we recognize the importance of neighborhood streets but because of uh, the conversations there's a number of things that we're going to shift back as we continue to work our way through this budget process ultimately culminating in a vote on August the 14th one we intend to have full funding for city arts uh, for the 2019 budget season and the understanding that we are still working towards a new model that we hope to develop prior to 2020. And I know the vice mayor, along with the city manager and some others, met with some leaders from the Arts Council and they had a very productive meeting. So they understand they're getting full funding, but that, that doesn't eliminate the need to look at uh, options. Two, we intend to fully fund Linwood and Evergreen Branch libraries. That funding will be restored the recommendation from the branch library study will be used as we bring greater focus to the branch operations in the future. Three, I uh, want to make it very clear that we intend to continue operations at Clap Golf Course, that it will remain open until we've had a chance to master plan the property. And Councilmember Clendenin has uh, been working very hard and having dialogue with the community about how to go about master planning that. And we're getting great feedback from the community on what they would like to see in amenities down there. But that golf course will remain open until we get through that process. And then four additional funding will be allocated to the Greater Wichita Partnership for new strategic in initiatives for job creation. We know that we're going to shift some priorities around in our Echo Devo department and we're going to try and utilize the Greater Wichita Partnership to a greater degree to help us focus on jobs in this community. And then additionally, funding for cultural institutions and grants will be provided in, in 2020. So we don't intend to shut down those quality of life opportunities in the uh, 2019 budget season. But in order to implement these changes while protecting basic services and increased street maintenance, we'll have to reduce about a million in that, those funds that I said we were increasing this year. So it looks like we will shift one million of the increase to street maintenance back over to those programs that I mentioned, which will, uh, were earmarked for street main, maintenance in 2019. During the next year, we will need to have meaningful community discussion, develop service delivery, and, and, a, and a mix that moves Wichita forward in a sustainable way. In a, in a sustainable way. That's, that's critically important that we have those community discussions and figure out how we can continue to fund those quality of life initiatives that everybody wants to enjoy, recognizing that today, and in today's environment and today's forecast, they're not sustain sustainable going forward unless we do something different. So, unless I miss something, we will open it up for questions at that point. Can you talk a little bit about the need um, adding to the police bill to make some 32 new officers? You know, what was the need there? Why? What was the so we, so we did an extensive study that looked at um, the priorities and optimum um, resources that this community needed to ensure that our community was safe. And, and we looked at doing that in phases. Well, phase one, and then sitting down with the police chief and the city manager and others that were interested, phase one is introducing 32 new positions they're not all um, police officers some of them will be civilian positions that will um, shift over and take current officers and move them into the role of commissioned officers right now they're doing a wide variety of tasks that takes them away from traditional policing and so moving that so this is intended to be phase one 
I understand that we have um, another class of, of police officers, I believe, that we're going to try and begin in August, and we're hoping that we can have a class of 33 to 35 um, participate in that new class starting in August. Now it takes it takes six months of classroom instructions to uh, to get through that training process, and then another additional three months of on street super supervision. So it's it's a lengthy process to train new new officers. So not only do we need to keep up with the, with attrition, we need to get into this phase one of this program to add more police officers to the streets. Three point four million. Other questions. On the economic development part of this, uh, what happens with those other groups that the city has been funding? Are they going to be funded through? So they'll have to, they'll have to potentially work with the partnership to receive the funding through the partnership. But we know that we're probably going to scale back some of the things that we've been attempting to do in economic development. And, and happy to uh, share some of that. You know, we've been, we've been trying to focus on some opportunities for uh, trade specifically with Mexico. I think we're gonna pull back a little bit from funding that initiative right now. And we've been funding um, some global trade initiatives at, at a very high level. We may shift that back a little bit and put more of it back onto the community. Me, uh so basically, the Greater Wichita Partnership will be the ones who decide how the city's economic development money is spent. So the Greater Wichita Partnership will be encouraged to develop a stronger relationship with all of these entities that are focusing on economic development. And with the city's help guide those funds, hopefully along with some other funds that they can raise privately to make that partnership even stronger. How are you going to keep public accountability for this? So we will continue to get uh, regular updates as we do now from the partnership on um, where they're spending these dollars and, and what they're achieving with them, as we do now. As we disperse them now, we, we simply get individual reports from each entity that we team with. That's really not intended to change any. They will continue to report but they will report and hopefully build stronger relationships with, um, with the Greater Wichita Partnership. And that truly, I believe, is what it was intended to do, is strengthen the economic opportunities in our, in our region, not just Wichita. Will their records and uh, meetings be open to the So I don't know that uh, that's going to change the open records portion. We already give the Greater Wichita Partnership funding. So I don't know that it's going to change that, what they give now. I mean, and, and as we all know, some, some of the work that we're doing requires us to be a little careful when we're trying to compete for companies, whether they're gonna choose Wichita or Charlotte or Dallas, we certainly don't wanna step on our own toes and put us in a difficult situation that might eliminate us from competing because we're trying to share all of our secrets right up front. I'm not sure that's the way we want to go after new opportunities. Other questions? You talked about streets earlier, um, emphasizing on neighborhoods. Are there specific neighborhoods that you... There, there are, and, and we're focusing on those that have obviously uh, the most deteriorating neighborhood streets, but you can go online to our Public Works Department, and they have those listed right now, uh, which streets are, are um, being planned for this new renovation because of the influx of dollars. I, I can probably give you some general ideas of some of the neighborhoods, but it's real easy to go online and look. Any other questions? So don't be afraid to check out a book while you're here and, um, and enjoy this wonderful facility. Thank you all for coming.